Welcome to a Grace Digital presentation. In this video, we shall be discussing Don't Be the Enemy's Prey. The devil is still the same jealous but sneaky fallen angel that has existed from the very beginning, always sneaking around in search of a victim to dominate. He is constantly watching out for an easy prey that would become less than the Creator designed humans to be. 1 Peter 5 8 Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. This is why some people live a life full of torment, and yet they can't explain what exactly is wrong, even when there is nothing visibly wrong with them. It must be really frustrating to live under an oppression that defies logical and scientific solutions. But this is why we must settle in our hearts, once and for all, that there is a spiritual realm that is beyond what the physical eyes can see. Ephesians 6, 12, AMP says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. We can't understand these kind of oppression with our minds, because they are not natural, but supernatural, and are orchestrated by demonic spiritual forces. And the aim is simple, to make God's prized possession nothing but a mouse caught in a painful trap. He desires nothing more than to see this unique and beloved human reduced to nothing more than a prey in his hands. This is why spiritual strength, power, and authority is needed to overcome the devil. Spiritual forces needs to be confronted spiritually, not intellectually. To confront them, you must do what Ephesians chapter 6 AMP says. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from Him and be empowered through your union with Him and in the power of His boundless might. Put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God, so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger, and having done everything that the crisis demands, to stand firm in your place fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, an upright heart, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, with all prayer and petition pray, with specific requests at all times, on every occasion and in every season in the Spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. Let's understand this scripture better so that we can live as victors and not victims or pawns in the devil's hand. Number one, be strong in the Lord. Why? Because our help comes from him. He's the only one that can help us discern what our real problems are by revealing to us the forces behind what is happening to us and also show us what to do to escape and be free from the torments and torture. Isaiah 12, 2, KJV says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. The word admonishes us to draw strength from our Father. The question is why and how do we draw strength from Him? We draw strength from His words and His presence as this is the only way we can withstand the onslaught of the enemies. God speaking in Isaiah 41.10 AMP says, Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, of salvation. 
See what Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 3, 14-16, KJV. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. If we must survive the onslaught of these evil spirits, then our spirit man needs to be strengthened with might. Otherwise, those attacks will consume us and make mincemeat of us. Number 2. Put on the full armor of God. This is because his precepts are like an armor of a heavenly armored soldier. The precepts of God represents the word of God that we study and learn to empower us to withstand the devil. Jesus demonstrated this in Luke 4, 1-13 AMP, when he was tempted by the devil. Luke 4, 1-13 AMP says, Now Jesus, full of and in perfect communication with that Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when they ended, he was hungry. Then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to turn into bread. Jesus replied to him, It is written and forever remains written, Man shall not live by bread alone. Then he led Jesus up to a high mountain and displayed before him all the kingdoms of the inhabited earth and their magnificence in the twinkling of an eye. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this realm and its glory, its power, its renown, because it has been handed over to me, and I will give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you worship before me, it will all be yours. Jesus replied to him, It is written and forever remains written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then he led Jesus to Jerusalem and had him stand on the pinnacle, highest point of the temple, and said mockingly to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written and forever remains written. He will command his angels concerning you to guard and protect you, and they will lift you up on their hands, so that you do not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus replied to him, It is said in Scripture, You shall not tempt the Lord your God to prove himself to you. When the devil had finished every temptation, he temporarily left him until a more opportune time. Jesus used the armor of the word by saying, It is written. If we are not students of God's word, then we will become cheap praise for the devil in this. Why? Hosea 4, 6 AMP says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of my law, where I reveal my will. Because you, the priestly nation, have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Also, Isaiah 5, 13 AMP says, Therefore my people go into exile because they lack knowledge of God, and their honorable men are famished, and their common people are parched with thirst. The knowledge of God's word is our most potent instrument against the schemes of the devil. The devil cannot easily deceive a word-loaded Christian. Number 3. Maintain victory by standing firm on the word. The victory we desire, even though is not fully manifested, must be fought for by standing on what God has assured us of. We need to do this because the devil is constantly trying to accuse us and pull us down. Revelation 12, 10 AMP says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom, dominion, reign of our God, and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our believing brothers and sisters have been thrown down at last, he who accuses them and keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them, before our God day and night. The Bible refers to the devil as the accuser of the brethren that looks for loopholes of sin against believers, so that he can have an opening to continue with this torment of the believer. The only way not to fall into his trap is to maintain the standards of Scripture. Number 4. Use the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Our faith fortifies and defends us against the arrows of the wicked. Once our faith is in place, the enemy finds it difficult to penetrate us. Isaiah 59, 19 KJV says, 
so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The standard lifted against the enemy comes from the spirit of faith in the word of God. Many times he comes like a roaring lion to afflict us with fear, but the spirit of faith in us keeps us strong, despite the arrows of evil. The spirit of faith fills us with the kind of confidence that is captured in Psalm 91, 1-16 through KJV, which says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wing shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right side, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for making me a victor and not a victim, despite the wiles of the devil. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace to commit to everything that make me live as a conqueror and declare that I shall never be the enemy's prey ever again. Amen.